Hello, I'm Dame Calandra from Raven's Cross in the Kingdom of the Golden Plains, also known as Serena Calandra in SCA. And but for Amtgard, I'm Dame Calandra. I'm talking about knots tonight. Now, knots are something that we pretty much do all the time. Sometimes we don't really know what the names are. And so we're going to go over some of the names for some common knots and how to do them, as well as some of the uses for them. You'll find that there's some knots are better for some purposes than others. So we'll talk about that. And most of the knots that we're going to go over are also good foundational pieces for beginning macrame or doing macrame jewelry, belts, and that type of thing. So I'm going to switch to the other camera. Also, as far as a handout, I do not have one. I do recommend just searching for knots and you'll find lots of tutorials out there that are better than anything I could write out up on, on that. And Let's get the camera switched over. So the basic knot that most projects that you do will probably start off with is what's called a lark's head. That's how you attach your cord to a dowel rod or a ring if you're starting to do a woven belt. I have, a, I have my ends doubled over and just a little bit of loop that I'm going to lay on top of my dowel rod. I'm going to turn the loop under and pull the ends through. And that is called a lark's head. So most people know how to do that, but usually don't know what it's called. Now, if you're doing macrame and you're reading instructions, it talks about a reverse lark's head. Well, that's what the backside looks like. And how you do it, how you do that is you put the loop under the ring or the dowel rod and then put the ends through. Oh, wait, no, that's, eh, see, I'm doing this backwards because that's the other way to do it. You would put it over and then pull the ends through, which I did just by grabbing the cords. And so that's your reverse arc said. So that's, your foundational knot there. Now, another knot that we end up having to do a lot for joining cords or tying things off is a square knot. Now for this one for practicing, sometimes it helps to have your ends color coded so you see which where they're going. The basic thing is taking the cord on the right, putting it on top of the left, and then turning it under and pulling it up. And then take the one that's on the left, cross it over the right, turn it under through that little loop and pull it through. And that's your square knot. When you know you've tied, to know that you've tied it correctly, if you grab both ends and pull, you can separate it. Now this is a pretty sturdy knot that will stay on most cords, on most things. If you're using something slick like rat tail, it will not hold for very long. It will come apart. You usually need to use a different type of ending. We can go over some different options on that here in a little bit. Now, if you don't tie it correctly, I'm gonna demonstrate how that works. Oftentimes what people will do is they'll just grab whatever end, they'll turn it under, and then instead of taking my left one and turning it under, I'm taking my right one and I'm going to turn it under. And that tie, see how it doesn't lay like the square knot? That is the granny knot. This tends to slide sometimes and will often come undone. So that's your difference on that. Square knot is one of the big foundational knots in macrame pieces in macrame jewelry. Now, Another basic knot that if you do friendship bracelets, you'll, you should be aware of this one. It's called a half hitch. So this one I'm going to lay on top of, lay the working end on top of the other cord. It kind of makes a, a four. I'm going to take it behind the standing cord here. And it just makes this little loop like that. And you pull it up to where you want it to be. That is a half hitch. 
in most friendship bracelet patterns, usually you do two hitches together. They could be coming from different directions, but on this one, we're just me doing the same direction. And I do that again. So you have the two hitches laying next to each other and that those are your half hitches. Now you can tie it from the other direction. Many patterns, because you may have a right, a right hitch or a left, a left hitch. They may call it a right knot or left knot. And so for this one, I'm taking the cord from this side and going over the opposite cord. And that's also with alternating hitches there. It does help sometimes to anchor whatever you're tying onto down. Uh, you can tie it to something or pin it down. But that's fun with the different, hi different hitches on there. Now I was talking about some cords, things tend to not always hold together. So this is rat tail, uh, sometimes called just satin cord. Uh, mouse tail is a thinner version of it. And I'm gonna tie a square knot. So it's holding for the moment, but sometimes it doesn't like to with this stuff. It can be very slick. And as you wear things out, it'll tend to come undone. So a knot that can be more sturdy to hold the ends together. Uh, this also works well with beading, uh, the fine beading cords. If you're using like the stretch magic plastic cords, things like that, we're gonna do what's called a surgeon's knot. Now on this one, I'm gonna take the left and I'm gonna cross it over the right. And then I'm going to turn it, I turned it under that cord. I'm going to do that about three times. I can get it to stay. I'm just wrapping it around that other cord is all I'm doing. So it's turned over three times. And then I'm going to take the right cord, cross it over the left, and then turn it under just once. And then pull. And that actually will hold together. So that's good if you're using the elastic cords or uh, really thin cords with like the beading stuff and you need something with extra strength, you have your weavers or so your surgeon's knot. Now that does some fun things with square knots is if you look, you, see the parachute cord bracelets and things like that, or uh, used to be hemp bracelets and necklaces that you would make. Uh, they use a thing called alternating square knot or the square knots over done over cords. This is also how I finish with some woven belts. So I have two cords in the center. You can do it with just one, just depends on what you have. I'm going to take my cord that's on the right and I'm going to put it over the two center cords. Then I'm taking my cord on the left. I'm laying it on top of this one here that I that I had crossed over. It's going to go under the two center cords and up through this loop on the right. And I'm going to push that up to where I want it to be. And then I'm going to take the cord on the left and lay it over the center cords. Then take the cord on the right over that cord that we just crossed over, goes under the center cords, and then up through the loop on the left. And that forms your complete square knot. Now, if you kept going the same direction all the time, so I'm going to cross over from the right and make my knot like I did when we were starting the first time. And then I'm going to go from the right again. If you keep doing that, coming from the same direction, being going over the top each time, 
or being the same going on the bottom each time, it's going to start to form a spiral. Now, when you do a series of square knots in a row or where you start letting it spiral, this is called a sinnet, where there's a series of them. You can see how that's already trying to twist. And so just going from the same direction each time will give you your spiral. So there's lots of things that you can do with that. So there's just some basic knots for getting started with uh, various crafts that will help you. I did want to show some other ways for trying to join cords together. Uh, this will be a common one that's done with yarn. That's called a Russian join. It's a way to try to end your or join your yarn without having to have a visible knot and kind of makes it look like it's seamless. So you need two pieces of yarn and yarn needles. I'm just going to thread my needle and leave a little bit of a tail. And then I'm going to take the the needle and pierce through the middle of the yarn. I'm coming from the bottom to the top. Then next I'm going to go through the middle from top to the bottom. It's just a little bit ahead of it. And you want to do that three or four times. And it's just all kind of scrunched up on there. And then you pull the needle through. You want to hold on to that little loop because you want to make sure you keep a loop. But pull the tail all the way through. So I've got a loop and I've got my tail coming down here. And I like to gently tug on the other end just to make sure that the yarn doesn't try to pull back out. So now we're going to take the other piece of yarn and thread it through the loop from the first one. And then we're going to do what we did on the first end. And I'm going to try to get as close to this loop as I can and pierce through the yarn. And do my alternating on that a few times. And then pull the tail through. And then now we take both sides and you pull them. And I'm pulling the short end and it made my loop disappear here because I pulled it tight. And then there you have your two pieces of yarn joined together. And this is good for for some jewelry projects, if you're trying to change colors in the middle of something or also for knitting and crocheting, and this will give you a more seamless look when you have to change colors. That's pretty strong there. It's always good to test that out though. Now, another one that can be fun to do is what's called a Josephine's knot is one name. Another name is a double coin knot. That's one thing with knots, you'll find that there are different names. Uh, different countries do have different names for the knots. Also different errors. This one is a pretty decorative knot, but it also can be used to join cords because you can, it's very similar to a Carrick bend only this one is done with one cord instead of two. Uh, but a Carrick bend, which is done with two cords, will look pretty much the same, very similar. 
It's just a little bit different, but this is a fun decorative one to show. It's also good for jewelry and macrame wall hangings because it's nice sometimes on the ends. Now, how this one starts is going to be a little bit different than what the success of knots will look like. You can also use this as just as a centerpiece, as center knot on a project. So this one also sometimes gets called a pretzel knot because that's how you're going to start it is a pretzel. So I'm have a, this little loop. I'm making it where the, the standing end is your end that you're not working with versus the working end that you're actively using. So my standing end is going down. My working end is going on top over the standing end. And then I'm going to lay it on top of it again so that my, my working end is on top over on the right. Sometimes using pins can help at this stage. You can pin it down to your surface. Pillows or cork boards are good for that. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to go under the standing end on the left. Which I'm going to try to pin that in place a moment. OK. Now that didn't work. So I went under this one. Now I'm going to go over the loop on the left. Then I'm going to go under the cord in the center. So I'm going over and under. So the next one I'm going over for my pretzel cross. And then I'm going to go under the loop on the right. And you just kind of have to pull it. Sometimes you have to work some of the cords around each other. You can pull it tight. You can leave it loose depending on what you're trying to do with it. But that shows the knot. Now, if you're trying to make a series of them together, like if you wanted to do a choker or a bracelet with these, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to start with making my nine here, with I have the standing end going down. Then, and this is what I did with the bottom cord. The top cord, I'm going to just lay on top like this, where it makes the little pretzel here. So this has one less loop that we have to deal with in the starting bit. So I'm going to go under the standing cord on the left. And then I go up here. And this one, I'm going to go under it, then over the cross one, and then under and out the loop on the end. And there it is. And sometimes you just have to move those cords around. But there you have two knots together. Now, some other basic knots would be our overhand knots, which is what I have on the end here. I'm trying to new piece of cord here to show that. Now, depending on what you're working with, often you want to tie a knot on the end of your pieces so that it doesn't fray. Overhand knot is just simple of wrap it around, make a little loop, and pull the cord through the loop. That's the overhand knot. If you did it with two ends together, which often has, is how people like to finish a, neck, a necklace or something, you just take the two ends together, you make your loop, and pull the ends through. Where that one didn't want to stay. And you have your double overhand. So that's a pretty good way to tie off the end of a necklace. But sometimes you don't know the size of the person's head and you want to do something a little bit different. You may want to have a sliding knot. You can also do this with a bracelet. There are several different sliding knots that you can use. I'm going to show a simple one to start off with. 
If you want to get fancier, I do recommend looking into sliding button knots, but those are a little more complex. In general, you do need to be looking at a diagram until you've done it several times. So this one is, I'm just going to take one end and I'm going to wrap it around. I went from the top and then under, and then now I'm going to go across over again and pull up through the loop. So it's kind of just like an overhand knot over one end, but it slides. So I'm going to take the other side here that I left and I'm going to do that on this end. So you're just making little overhand knots over another cord. You can add, you know, depending on the strength of your cords or how slick it is, you may want to add another additional loop or something like that going through it a couple times. But that allows you to have your sliding knot closure, which is great for bracelets and necklaces. Another simple thing, basic knot that you may need to know is a slip knot. That is something that's going to be commonly used with starting crochet and also helpful for other jewelry pieces. There's a few different ways to do that. My easiest way I like to do is I cross, I have my short end and my long end. My short end is gonna cross the long end and I have a loop. I'm gonna reach through the loop and pick up that long end and pull it through while holding the short end. And there is a slip knot. Now you can do it by wrapping around also. So to the short end, I'm going over the top of the long end, over the short end, and up. I don't do it this way very often. That's one form. I don't like this one as much. It's not as strong as the other one that I do. But there's lots of different slip knots that you can that you can play around with. Now, sometimes if you're starting a piece and you want a little bit more uh, strength with your knot that you're say I had a jump ring or something that I wanted to add on things or just to make a little loop to start things off with. And this is also good for for tents. I'm going to do what's called a top line hitch. So I have my short end is my working end. I made a just making a little loop here. I'm going to just wrap it up through this loop a couple times. Usually I would do three, but I don't I didn't leave enough cord. So I have this coming up through the center. I'm going to cross it over the loop under the standing end of the cord and then pull it through the loop and my end is fraying. And that makes where you can, that makes a sliding loop. Usually you would want to leave more cord than what I left. But that makes a sliding loop that you can slide up against things. So it's helpful for tent poles, but sometimes is useful in some other uh, macrame purposes. And those are basic knots that will help you get started with a, with a variety of crafts. And if you have any questions, just let me know.